going deeper. Uh, it's, a, it's a journey. Uh, and, and, and don't be discouraged in the process of developing this, this relationship with the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dance. Uh, you gotta, you got to learn that he's, he's so uh, gentle and so hidden and silent and, and loves to stay behind the scenes that, that I, I wish he'd push himself more uh, in, into my, but, but that would take away from me paying attention. That would take away from me cultivating. It would take away from me listening. It would take away from me uh, wanting him to guide and lead and speak and woo and draw me deeper. Uh, so he, he delights to do it. You never have to talk him into it. But, and, but he, and he rarely explains, this is how I'm going to do it. Like if you're praying for more of something in your life, Lord, I need more joy, and you're praying for that, it, it, he's going to answer that prayer, but it's going to come in a way that you, or at a time that you least expected or didn't. It's like, how did that happen? Well, the Holy Spirit is working in you, and he's even working in the very things you pray for. He's guiding that prayer. It says in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 26, that he helps us in our weaknesses, in our prayers. He guides us on what to pray for or redirects our prayers or puts in us a burden to pray for things. And so this last uh, talk, uh, next to last, uh, we want to talk about uh, the role of the Holy Spirit enabling us to do the things that God has asked us to do, to do His will. Uh, we're going to talk about, and this each one's been a delicious sense of, this one will be a delicious sense of the incredible power of God that's been revealed through the resurrection in us. That's a long statement, but we're just basically going to ask the Holy Spirit to show us to reveal to us the power that's available to us that's like the power of the resurrection of Jesus. So we're going to go back to Ephesians 1. Uh, we looked about the sealing, the marking, the, the erebone, the deposit. Uh, we looked at the prayer of, of Paul early on in, in verse 17 of chapter 1, that he keeps asking that God, uh, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know him better. You're not going to know him better without the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how much you read the Bible. It doesn't even matter. If, you, if the Holy Spirit doesn't unlock truths to you, open your eyes, you're not going to know him better. Verse 18, Paul says, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. The idea is by the Spirit. You don't enlighten yourself. You can shine all the lights you want on the Bible, but until the Holy Spirit... Boop, boop, you're not going to have your eyes open. So he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you might know he's going to pray for three things here. We're going to focus on the third. The first one is that you might know what is the hope to which he's called you. There's a, there's a calling from God for all of us that's leading to something. It's leading to his purposes, his destiny that he has in our lives. Paul says, I want you to understand that hope, that we'll be people of hope because of that calling. Number two, he says, I, I, I pray that he'll open your eyes to the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. He says, I want you to know what your bank account is. I want God to open your eyes to who is your father. He's the king of the universe. He's the creator of the world, and he has an inheritance Paul prays, God, open your eyes to how wealthy you are in Christ. And then the third, he says, and, verse 19, and this incomparable great power for us who believe. So he's prayed for hope, riches, power. He says, I want you to get a delicious sense. May the Holy Spirit breathe on us this incredible, incomparable Great power to who? For us who believe. So if you are doubting, you're not going to experience the power. If you're an unbeliever, you're not going to know the power. It, it, it's a power that flows through faith. Without faith, you're not going to know this. Energizing, enabling power of God. It requires us on our part to believe him, 
So Paul describes this power. He said that this power is like the working of his mighty strength. He uses so many adjectives here, incomparable, great. Talks about power, power that's like the working of his mighty strength, verse 20, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Now, let me just say this, that the resurrection of Jesus was the greatest manifestation of God's power, even more than original creation. You say, wait a minute, it was just one person that was dead, and and you're telling me that that, what happened to Jesus is of a greater power, took more. When God created the universe out of nothing, God spoke it into existence. This is God recovering Jesus, his son, out of death in such a way that when he is raised, the whole universe is affected by that resurrection. When Christ rose from the dead, Romans 8 says that all creation is groaning, waiting to be redeemed because it's waiting on us to be raised from the dead. So you can't think of Christ's resurrection as an isolated event. It's an, it's an event in history that changed all of history. It's not just a religious holiday on Easter we celebrate. What happened to Jesus in the grave, the power to defeat Satan, to defeat, defeat death, defeat sin, conquer things, not just recreate his body, not just raise it from the dead, the same body that was assaulted and whipped and beaten and crucified. He raises that body, totally renewed. Death is defeated. Satan is defeated. So in that resurrection, Paul says, listen, I want you guys to think about the power that God exerted there is the power that the Holy Spirit brings to us here. It's, it's, It's inconceivable. But that's why he says, pray for the Lord to open the eyes of your heart that you'd know the power that's available to us. Now, it's not power to put on a show. Uh, It's not power even to necessarily have good feelings. But it's the Holy Spirit would breathe on us a delicious sense of the incredible power that's available to us today through the resurrection. That power is to enable us to do the things God asks us to do. So here's the wall that you're going to hit in your Christian life. I'm sure you've already hit it if you've been saved more than a few months. You're going to hit the wall that because it's it's the old adage that someone started out as Christian life and said, hey, you know, I quit a few bad habits, did these things. I thought, well, this Christian life, is it's easy. It's saying, oh, man, I got forgiveness, and I've quit a few bad habits, and I'm starting to read the Bible, and and then, boom, you hit the wall of of temptation, and, and you... And you fall on your face and you say, wow, uh, this, this Christian life is it's, it's, it's hard, harder than I thought. I mean, there's people against me. There's, there's spirits that are working. There's, there's, my flesh doesn't want to read the Bible. And, and I struggle. To, boy, it's, this Christian life, it went from, man, this is, this is easy. It's wonderful. So I call it the, the new believer's goosebumps. You know, everything is wonderful. Everything's new. Prayers are answered like that. You know, it's just this. It's, it's Christopher Columbus discovered the new world. But all of a sudden, it gets hard. But then it doesn't stay hard. It'll get much harder. It becomes warfare. It becomes the dark night of the soul. It becomes horribly difficult to the point that you, you say, God, I, I can't do this. And the Lord basically responds with, I never thought you could. I never intended for you to. The Christian life isn't about you trying harder. The gospel is he's done the work and he wants to give us the strength to do what he's called us to do. That's the role of the Holy Spirit. So you may know the will of God, but that doesn't mean that you have the the resources in you without the Holy Spirit, the enablement to carry out that will. So you may know God wants you to serve in a certain area in the church, but but if you think you're going to serve there 
in your own strength, then you're not going to serve effectively or you're going to make it about you. We often have to move people in church life out of areas that they're really good at into areas they're not so good at. And why would you do that? Well, because if you're really good at an area, could even be a musician, phenomenally gifted at it, but we may move you to the soundboard. Why? Don't you? you know, we love musicians, but you might make it too much about you for a while. You may need to learn to do something that takes the focus off of you. Uh, you know, I've had people over the years that have tremendous financial capabilities and wisdom, but yet you put them in a role in the church of administrating, and they can become a tyrant. Uh, it just becomes not graceful. It's not mercy. It's not, and so, but they, they could serve over here and blossom in an area that they feel vulnerable, insecure, maybe leading a group. I've seen that over the years where people that are strong in this, but you put them in the, in the waters of, of leading a small group and, and, and they freak out in a good way and they say, oh God, oh God, oh God, help, I need power. That's what Paul is giving us the promise is to pray that the Holy Spirit will open your eyes to see that, that when God calls you to do something, He's never going to call you to do something more than he'll give you the grace and power of the Spirit to do. So if he says, Lord, I want you to do this, and you think, well, I, I've only got this, and that, that'll never happen. And he'll give you the power of the Spirit equal to the assignment, equal to the task. If you're out of where you ought to be, you're doing more than you ought to do, or you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing, even good things, you could be like this, that, 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 or excuse me, like this, that your, your, your need is here and the grace is here. Why? Because you're, you're saying, I'm doing too much. Well, isn't it better to do more? Not always, not if God's not saying it. His power is to be proportionate to what we need. For example, you know, I, my wife and I, uh, Pastor Kim, were visiting a lady dying of cancer here uh, uh, a while back, and, and she ministered to us. I mean, it was profound encouraged us, full of, couldn't get out of bed, couldn't move, uh, uh, barely, and died uh, a couple days later. And I'm like, I, I think of myself, man, if I knew I had terminal whatever, and I'm laying there, and so there was no self-pity, there was no woe is me, there was no life's not fair, there was no why, 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 it was just peace and the joy of ready to go see Jesus. That is what Paul's talking about here. That's not human. That's not her being a, a courageously strong woman. No, that's her being breathed upon with this, this delicious sense of the incredible power of the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. He breathes on marriages like that where he helps you become the man or the woman that you could never be in your own strength. If, if marriage doesn't reveal to you how far from God you are and how much you need the Holy Spirit, I don't know what else would reveal it. Being married to somebody like me has brought my wife to many occasions where she just like, God, I need your grace to love this guy. I'm not easy to love. Neither are you, by the way, uh, lest you get in a little judgmental uh, attitude. We all have our brokenness and sin and weaknesses and blind spots and blah, blah, blah. There's nobody that, that, that you know, and, and so it's okay to say, God, I can't do this, but don't stop there. That becomes a false humility. It becomes an excuse, it becomes unbelief because God never thought you could do it. Well, God does believe and know that he can give you the power to do what you need to do. He still raises the dead. Now, he never does it, rarely does. I should say rarely. He does whatever he wants. But the thing I've discovered with the Lord when you're praying for the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to his power, it's not that he takes away our weaknesses. It's not that he eradicates our deficiencies. I wish that was true. I wish I felt super powerful, superhuman, supercharged, super strong, I'm fuerte in Cristo, you know, I'm strong in Jesus. And, and, but I'm, I usually feel inadequate, insecure, uh, uncertain, weak, depleted. You know, it's like, okay, Lord, I, I help. But if you let all those things disqualify you, 
instead of letting them be opportunities to experience the power of God. It's what we call the power of ugly, that you're ugly in being deficient, weak, limited. You, you, you just you can't do it on your own strength, and we acknowledge that. I lack the wisdom. I lack whatever. And so we celebrate it because we know that in that fertile soil of my weaknesses, the Holy Spirit will open the eyes of my heart to see I've got this incredible power I'm hooked to, the Holy Spirit, who enables me. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he puts that want to back in me when I don't want to. I don't know how he gives me the courage and strength to say, no, I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, yield to that temptation. Uh, you know, I, I know this, that without that power, I'm, I'm no match for the enemy. I'm no match for his attacks on me. But with his power, greater is he that's in me, this, this, this spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, than he that's in the world. So pray for more power. But remember, it's not more experiences necessary, but it's okay if it comes with an experience. I welcome that. I think you should feel the Holy Spirit at times. If you've never felt that, you've never had your affections and emotions, and I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. The danger, though, is that you attribute the feelings and emotions to the power, and you can be powerfully anointed by God and not even be aware of it, and that's where humility comes in. There's some of my Messages I preached thought well, they were horrible messages. I just tanked it. Wasn't it? And then God would save people and God would touch people. And I'm like, wow, I, I, it, it wasn't about me. It's about his power, his gospel, his spirit. So let me encourage you. Pray for God to open your eyes to the resources, the power, so you can stop saying I can't and you can start saying I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4, 13, beautiful verse. And this is the dance. I'm weak, he's strong. I, I need help, he's the helper. I, 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 I can't do it on my own, he's come to help you do it. He's, he's, and he'll help you do it in such a way that you know God gets all the glory because it wasn't you. And so let me just pray for you in your group, uh, that the Holy Spirit will breathe on you tonight. Let's pray. Father, I just pray for our groups and uh, just pray that, Holy Spirit, that you will breathe on them a delicious sense of the incomparable, incredible power that's available to them, that's been evidenced in the resurrection. It's like the power that raised Jesus from the dead and set him at your right hand, Father, above everything. Lord, would you just give that confidence in your power? Lord, we have the, the healthy humility in our own weaknesses and deficiencies, but help us have the, the faithful confidence that your grace is sufficient. Your power will be whatever we need to face whatever we have to face. You enable us, and we, we're grateful, Father. Bless the time of sharing. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.